The headlines tonight, governor's wife to reward nursing mothers whose babies are on exclusive breastfeeding. State government to partner a Moji community for proposed pharmaceutical manufacturing hub in the area. A federal government vows to sanitize issuance and withdrawal of passports in Nigeria. On the foreign scene tonight, Thailand nightclub fires kills 13, dozens more injured. Now, before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saluda has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening to you and welcome to the news. I am Eberi Ugunna. The wife of Anambra State Governor, Mrs. Nonya Saluda, has pledged to organize a reward program for nursing mothers whose babies have been certified to be exclusively breastfed. The governor's wife stated this while flagging up the 2022 World Breastfeeding Week at Maternal and Child Health Center, Amobia. Correspondent Daniel Ezigwe reports. Why is planning that breast milk is a key element in growth and health of any baby? Mrs. Soludo noted that having exclusively breastfed all her children, she was in the right position to educate mothers on its efficiency. She stated that as another way to move Anambra State from the current 27% statistics on the National Exclusive Breastfeeding Index, she will set up a reward program for nursing mothers who pass the test. The governor's wife stated that as a hygiene ambassador and advocate of healthy living, she was worried about effective hygiene practices by the pregnant and nursing mothers as well as in primary health care facilities. Exclusive breastfeeding with the greatest presence, the greatest immunization, the greatest gift in the normal children. The Commissioner for Health, Dr. Afam Obidike, in his remarks, said that the state government is building fertile health ground for everybody living in Anambra State and emphasized the importance of infants and maternal health. Dr. Obidike noted that exclusive breastfeeding was important as it prevents most child killer diseases, helps in family planning, and checks made breast cancer among women. Breast meat exclusive for the first six weeks, as six months. Oh, yeah, memo again. Brain, yeah, and then more, more, more. But I'm pulling that one. You're not exclusive. Now, I'm here. But the chances are really, yeah, yeah, they reduce. I'm pulling that one. You're not exclusive. But I'm pulling that one. But I'm pulling that one. Again, oh, get hospital. The Anambra State House of Assembly has passed a bill for a law to establish Anambra State multi-door courthouse and connected purposes. The House passed the bill during plenary. House of Assembly correspondent Chukwe Mekamodalim reports. The executive bill seeks to enhance access to justice by providing alternative mechanisms to supplement litigation and the resolution of disputes through establishment of a multi-door courthouse. After close-by-close -close considerations of the bill by the committee of the Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Ucho Kafo read out the bill for passage while the lawmakers supported it through voice vote. Distinguished colleagues, is this a true reflection of what happened at the Committee of the Whole? Yes. If so, does it support that this report be made a walking tour of this honorable house? Say aye. Aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have Commenting on the bill, the member representing Jikoka 1 constituency, Dr. Timothy Ifedora, Amma, noted that the bill will eliminate all litigations associated with universal codes, minimize citizens' frustration and delays in justice delivery by providing legal framework for fair and efficient settlement of disputes using multi-door courthouse. It's an introduction of ADR into our judicial process and uh, uh, jurisprudence which of course is the new uh, directive or the new direction of a judicial uh, a process or review as it were. And so, it, you know, it's, it's a monumental great achievement uh, by the Anambra State House of Assembly, you know, and in the Anambra in general, because that opens the door for uh, lesser uh, contentions as regards you know, the 
rudiments of uh, the court system. Also at plenary, the court passed a resolution directing the Commissioner for Land, Survey and Town Planning to deal directly with also James Eze as a landowner and pay him 20% compensation plots due to him at Unquele and Diciago communities respectively and adequately compensate also James Eze for his economic trees and crops that were damaged on or before two weeks from the date of the adoption of the recommendations of its Committee on Public Petition on the petition brought to the House by Ozo James. The state government has concluded arrangements with the people of Oboja community in Orumba South local government area over 200 hectares of land for the proposed Anambra State Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Hub. The proposed pharmaceutical manufacturing hub is set to house over 100 pharmaceutical companies, School of Pharmaceutical, among others. Correspondent Emmanuel Okongwa reports. Addressing the people of Oboji community, the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Afamo Bidike, who led the state government team on inspection of the 200 hectares of land, said that the project will on completion provide Indianambra and entire Africa with quality drugs and serve as major supplier of pharmaceuticals in the continent. Commissioner Obidike used the opportunity to call on youths in the area to maximally support the government on the project which he pointed out will provide job opportunities for them and other youths in the state. And it's a good thing which will help to reduce. Uh, one, it's going to improve the quality of uh, drugs we produce in Nigeria. And it's good enough, our special advisor, the governor of medical and pharmaceuticals, well experienced on this, uh, who think through on it and uh, with the, uh, the governor's assistance, uh, this will serve the purpose of Africa in general. And uh, if you look beyond uh, just production of quality drugs, it's also going to massively improve uh, um, employment to the youths in this environment. And it's a very wonderful thing, and we pray to God to guide us through to the end of it. On his part, the Commissioner for Lands, Professor Fonze Amuchazi, who said that the project is for progress and development of the community and Anambra State in general, had judged the site as perfect, assuring Ndiyoboji that the project will soon kick off and be completed in due time. And I must say that this is a wonderful site. I never knew Anambra State had this expanse of land. And I can say that with what the governor has in mind, um, Africa will come to this place. The world will come to this place. The special advisor to Governor Chukuma Soludo on medicals and pharmaceuticals, Dr. Godwin Nadozie, explained that the project is designed to be the first of its kind in Nigeria and best in Africa, noting that on completion, the pharmaceutical manufacturing hub will forever emancipate Anambra State from poverty. In their various speeches, the traditional ruler of Oboji community, Igwe Festus Iyoko, the traditional Prime Minister, Dr. Ken Anyacho, President General of the town, Prince Epundu Emechebe, and Mayor of Urumba South Council Area, Prince Sunday Uchendu, thanked the state government for citing the project in Oboji, assuring the total support of the community to the world-class project and Soludo-led administration. We are cited uh, for his, uh, Mr. Governor to have chosen us to cite this project here and uh, we are cited and we are glad that's why as much as we can we must do everything to support that vision. Speaking the youth's vice chairman and chief security officer of the yeah, town, Mr. Yeah, Ogochuk nah, Uchendu, who stood in for their chairman, assured the unalloyed support and security of the project during, before and after completion. The surveyor general of the state, Mr. Anthony Idigo, was among government team that inspected the site.
The Archbishop Province of the Niger, Most Reverend Alexander Ibezim, has presented food items to retired Catholic priests and to children in orphanage homes. The items were presented to them at the Priest Welfare Home and the Faith Community Children's Home, all in Oka. Correspondent Imano Chibata reports that the act of benevolence was to promote ecumenism as, and as part of activities to celebrate his 60th birthday. His report. The Archbishop, who is also the Bishop of Oka Diocese, will be 60 today and presented items like bags of rice, beans, noodles, liters of vegetable oil and other gifts to the beneficiaries. Presenting the items, Archbishop Ibezim, who said the visit was to celebrate with the elderly retired Catholic priests who labored in God's vineyard, thanked the Catholic Bishop of Oka Diocese, Most Reverend Paulinus Ezokafo, for honoring his invitation, while he reaffirmed his commitment towards promoting ecumenism in Anambra State and beyond. Archbishop Ibezim said that for the past 12 years as bishop and three years as archbishop, he has always shared ideas with the Catholic prelate describing him as conscientious and quiet leader that has ever remained supportive to him. The Anglican prelate, who also visited the Faith Community Children's Home, reiterated the love he has for children and assured them of his support and quality education through the Anglican institutions, appreciating the home for taking immense care of them. We have always been a very conscientious, quiet leader, and uh, for these uh, years we have understood ourselves. So I said we cannot be celebrating and uh, I will look away and see if you are not there. I know that you are there 100% with all that you are doing. So as part of this, our visit, it's also to celebrate with you, to tell you that this is what we are doing. To use this opportunity to thank you for all the support. Responding, Bishop Ezokafo expressed his gratitude to the Archbishop for extending his act of charity to the Catholic Church, saying the magnanimity meant a lot to them. So for you to have thought, of, thought it out, they need to come and see this place. I'm very, very happy about it. Because, uh, like you said, we believe that I'm now a working young man trying to say, one day I will go to, if I, God gives me a life, I'm sure that I will end this way. There is no doubt. There is a so, One of the retired Catholic priests, Monsignor Simon Amateze, who spoke on behalf of others, appreciated the Archbishop for the well thought out plan of visiting them, praying God to reward him abundantly. I will remember you, but we also visit you. Mm. And that you have done. Mm. Thank God for that. Yes, the art of Thanksgiving, gratitude leads to gratitude. Amen. On behalf of the Faith Orphanage Homes, Ms. Iforma Ago revealed to the Archbishop some challenges confronting the home and appreciated him for the visit. The Bishop of Ida Diocese, Right Reverend Joseph Musa, Oka Diocesan Administrator, Venerable Rex Kano, were part of the visit. In a similar development, the Archbishop also gifted the retired Anglican priests and wives bags of rice and cash while he hosted children's party as part of activities marking his birthday. Special presentation to the Archbishop and dance by the children capped the event, which had in attendance the President, Mothers' Union and Women's Guild, Province of the Ninja and Oka Diocese, and Emeritus Bishop of Isukuato Umunoshi Diocese, Right Reverend Sam Chukuka. In Oka, Emmanuel Shibata for ABS News. Still ahead in the news tonight, federal government vows to sanitize issuance and withdrawal of passports in Nigeria. Now, the four insane Thailand nightclub fire kills 13, dozens more injured. Here is a special message India number cannot allow criminal elements to hold the state and the people to ransom. Donate generously to the Number State Security Trust Fund, which has been set up to raise money for combating insecurity in the state. The news returns in a moment. Please stay with us. Traveling? You deserve the absolute best. Enjoy maximum comfort in our new buses with more legroom, like reclinable seats, onboard entertainment, and much more. Pick your preferred seat. Choose your preferred schedule. Travel on your terms. Ready for a premium ride driven by the best captains out there? Book now.
We're glad to have you back for the rest of the news. Moving on to our national stories now, the federal government has vowed to sanitize the issuance and renewal of passport in Nigeria to eliminate corruption associated with it. Speaking when a delegation of the executive members of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, visited him in his office, the Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Raouf Aribishala, vowed that the federal government would bring sanity to the system with a view to eliminating corruption. He explained that government has opened an immigration service portal for the issuance of passports. This, according to him, would eliminate a face-to-face -face contact. The minister said that the process is not only seamless, but also geared towards enhancing transparency and eliminating corruption. He warned members of the public to stop patronizing touts or ununiformed officers in processing their passports because their actions are illegal, unwarranted, as they are only interested in making money out of the people. He used the occasion to announce that more data capturing centers have been set up across the six geopolitical zones of the country to ease the difficulties being faced during the processing of e-passports. And on business news, the managing director of Nigerian Ports Authority, Mohamed Belo Koko, has urged the Standard Organization of Nigeria to play an active role in exporting processing zones to first track Nigeria's export drive. Belo Koko said this in Lagos during a meeting with the Director General of SON Sun, Farouk Salim. He said Sun's tactical expertise will be brought to bear through its participation in the joint cargo inspection and examination for greater efficiency and swift apprehension of suspected substandard products. He disclosed that both organizations will deliberate on the personnel and equipments to be utilized following the presidential approval for export processing terminals. Earlier in his remarks, Director General SON Malam Farouk Salim expressed regret of the dangers posed by the influx of substandard products through the concerted efforts of relevant agencies and stakeholders towards growing the nation's economy. According to him, the situation was partly responsible for the increased unemployment rate and poor wealth creation in the country. He added that all hands should be on deck to reverse the negative trend. Farouk expressed SON's preparedness to extend its management system standard certification and training services to NPA personnel to continually improve its efficiency in service delivery. On the following scene, at least 13 people have been killed and dozens more injured in a fire at a crowded nightclub in eastern Thailand. Provincial Police Chief Major General Atasit Kajahan said the course of the fire at the Mountain B nightclub and the setup the street of Chumbori province, about 160 kilometers southeast of Bangkok, is under investigation. He said the club's owner and staff were given statements at the police station and that the police forensic team will be collecting evidence on the scene. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Orcher assured families of victims that they would receive help from authorities and urge entertainment venues nationwide to ensure they have proper emergency exits and safety measures in place. Several witnesses described seeing smoke and fire on the ceiling near the venue stage, followed by the sound of explosions. And on sports news, Nigeria will face 2016 European champions Portugal in an international friendly shadow to hold in September. This was revealed by the Nigerian Football Federation Secretary General, Mohamed Senussi. The three-time African champions were initially shadowed to play Guinea-Bissau in a double-header African Cup of Nations qualifiers in the FIFA international break. But with the qualifiers postponed until March 2023 by the Confederation of African Football last month, the NFF are busy arranging a grade A friendly for the Eagles. According to Sanusi, discussion with the Portuguese FA for the friendly game between Nigeria and Portugal is in top gear. It will be the first time that Nigeria and Portugal will meet at the senior level, even though both countries played against each other three times at the Under-20 World Cup in Portugal, winning all three meetings. And that's it on the news tonight. But well, remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television. Okay. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. Well, and just before we go tonight, a quick look at our major stories. Governor's wife is to reward nursing mothers whose babies are on exclusive breastfeeding. Our state government is to partner a Waji community for a proposed pharmaceutical manufacturing hub in the area. Our federal government has vowed to sanitize issuance and withdrawal of passport in Nigeria. On the foreign scene, we brought to you the Thailand nightclub fire has killed 13 
dozens more injured. Well, here is a special message before we go. Governor Chukuma saluto his camp for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the size of our package tonight. Many thanks for joining the bulletin. I'm Iberi. We're going to enjoy the rest of the evening.